Hey guys, welcome back to the No Community Channel. My name is Varun Shah, and this is going to be Evergreen Tips, talking about whether or not we should consider buying a larger hard drive for our game consoles or possibly buying a hard drive or external hard drive to use with our new consoles for this generation. Along with that, I'm going to touch on a little bit between the debate between disc versus digital for gaming because I thought this would be a rather shorter video. So without further ado, let's get started. So this generation, we have the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One being the major consoles. Uh, both have standard 500 gig hard drives, the price base for those being 350. I'm not looking at bundles or any of that or any sales. 350 is the base price, it's the MSRP pretty much for 500 gig models for each of them. Uh, then there are terabyte models actually coming up or already out in certain markets, roughly 500 for the PS4 and already confirmed 500 for the Xbox One Elite Edition. It also includes an Elite controller if that's interesting to you. So, what's so great about having the bigger hard drive? Obviously, bigger hard drive means you can install more games, you don't have to worry about running out of space, you don't have to delete stuff constantly. Essentially, a bigger hard drive means less to think about, you don't have to worry. So, the question most buyers will be asking upcoming holiday season, whether should I save the money and just buy the lower edition model and just upgrade later if I need to, or should I just future-proof myself, buy the bigger hard drive even though it's a little bit more expensive, I think it's going to be worth it. That kind of mentality. Obviously a lot of parents and whatnot are going to be asking that, or even gamers themselves who are going to look to purchase the items themselves. So you've got two options for both of these consoles. Some of you may not be aware, but the PlayStation 4 hard drive is upgradable by yourself. There are about five screws, so there'll be a video on the next slide. And the Xbox One allows you to use external hard drives. So, what does that mean? It means for the PlayStation 4, you can go out and buy a terabyte hard drive yourself, often cheaper than the paying for the 500. It's definitely not $150 to get the terabyte hard drive. And for the Xbox One, you can buy your own external hard drive, something you may even already have in your house, hook it up to the Xbox One, and start using it that way. So here are the two solutions I just discussed. On the left, you'll see an ex uh, internal hard drive that you can install on the PlayStation 4, and on the right, you can see the official Xbox One external hard drive that you can purchase from Seagate. Now, let me quickly cover a couple quick things. If you're gonna buy an internal hard drive for the PS4, my suggestion is spend a little bit extra and get what's called a solid state hybrid drive. What this means is it's not a full solid state because it's a full solid state is a lot more expensive and obviously would be a lot faster. What a hybrid drive does is it stores files that are almost always used or used very often in the solid state portion, which is a smaller portion, and then it stores the raw data files that it accesses on a slower basis in the formal hard drive, the larger area on the hard drive. So the idea behind this hard drive is to give you somewhat of the speed of a solid state, but with the price of a normal hard drive. Now it's mid-range obviously between a normal hard drive of one terabyte for instance versus a solid state one terabyte. If you look up there are a bunch of videos on YouTube you can see speed comparisons between solid state and the hybrid drive. It's pretty negligible a couple seconds here and there but between the hybrid and a normal drive there are significant time savings that you can see if you were to watch or look at that information. up. The external drive speeds aren't that big of an issue just using it because it's cheap. I guess you can get a solid state if you want to install faster, but in terms of loading, I haven't read that there's a big issue with read times. There probably will be, but I haven't seen a, a clear comparison. I have not seen a direct comparison video of external hard drives. I'm sure there is one if you bother to look for it. Ideally, I would assume a USB 3.0 drive would perform faster than obviously a USB 2.0 drive. There's a lot more choice there. You do not need to buy the official drive. In fact, in my opinion, I would suggest you not do that. It's just already formatted. That's the only benefit you get by buying the official one. A two terabyte drive, which is what you're seeing, they're asking $200, whereas you can buy a generic two terabyte for sometimes 150 or even less. So I don't think it's worth it to spend that much on an external drive when you can get a non-name brand or even another Seagate one for cheaper. 
but to break down the main reason I made this video is to tell you whether you should be deciding between buying an internal or external drive for your console or choosing to either stick with the standard drive because maybe your gaming habits are a little less and you don't install that much or maybe you think it's worthwhile to just buy the bigger hard drive because you don't want to deal with installing your own hard drive. So right there on the right, like I said, is actually Greg Miller installing his PlayStation 4 hard drive into his new PlayStation 4. And you can, of course, plugging in an external drive, you just gotta format it for the Xbox One, there's not much there. But here are the main pros and cons. As you can see, I have listed pros. If you're looking for external storage or expanded storage, it's cheaper to buy it yourself. You can use a faster drive. Not all of the new Xboxes have the solid state hybrids. Some of them do, some of them don't. Uh, to my knowledge, the new PS4 one terabyte does not have a solid state hybrid, so there's that. There's less for you to delete, obviously, with a larger drive. You can go bigger than a terabyte if you think you're going to game that much. With the external drive, you can take already installed games to your friend's Xbox One, hook it in there so they don't have to install the game, and you can start playing. Obviously, there's faster load times, like I said, with the hybrid drive. There are a few cons, of course. You have to install it yourself with the internal drive for the PlayStation 4. If unscrewing five screws is too much for you, then I guess go for buying or sticking with the existing drive. With the external drive, you can always lose it. That's always a case. It sometimes might be hard if you decide to resell the console because if you've installed the internal drive for the PlayStation 4, that can be an issue. Um, and there's a question of warranty. I haven't read that PlayStation won't service an extra internal drive that's been purchased elsewhere, but it may be the case that when you send it in, you may be required to put that original 500 gig drive, which may cause problems when you want to install your games. You may end up having to reinstall your games, or you may not be able to figure out if the problem was with the internal drive you installed, so on and so forth. As I stated, what I wanted to do is just give you guys information and help you guys make the decision yourselves whether or not you want to buy these external drives or stick with the original 500 gigabytes or decide to wait and buy the terabyte models that are coming out this holiday. It's up to you, you gotta decide is it worth the risk that I've discussed here or do you, would you not really care, do you think you're tech savvy enough to deal with the issues if something like that happens? Is it worth it for the potential $75 to $100 savings depending on what you decide to end up buy? So that being that, I wanted to just jump topics a little bit to something somewhat related and that's going to be digital versus disc. So you've probably heard what will probably become an age-old argument between download versus disc when purchasing games. You may find benefit of one or the other, you may already choose to follow one or the other, or you may even do a combination of both. For me personally, I generally get my free games, whatever comes with PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live's free game every month. That's what I normally get digitally. Every now and then I may buy a digital only game, but I generally stick with this because I think their benefits outweigh. But I'm still going to try and be non judgmental and state the facts for both. So let's get started. First, when you're downloading digital, there's no waiting in the sense that when you buy it, the game's ready for you, you just click download and you can get started. Obviously, depending if it's a pre-order, you get midnight access and some kinds of pre-download, so those are bonuses so that for people who don't want to go to a midnight launch or if there may not be a midnight launch for smaller games, you get access right away. Then another great benefit, obviously, when you download content and keep it on your account, when you switch consoles, it's easy to just get your content on there. Or if you're at your friend's house, you can just log in and download some games depending on the restrictions of the game. So there's ease of access and obviously the biggest benefit for most people is no disc swapping. When you're done playing Destiny, you just slide over, you start Arkham Knight. When you're done with Arkham Knight, you slide over, you can start Uncharted, so on and so forth. But of course, that doesn't come without its cons. Downloading has no real they're not regular sales. What I mean is you're not going to see, for instance, the Taken King on Black Friday for $40 on the SCN store or the Xbox Live store. But on the flip side, the disc version might see that. That's possible for a AAA title to have a major price cut in the coming weeks. It's not seen that often for a AAA title on the download side. And that's always never made sense to me because it costs them less to produce, but it is what it is. 
Obviously, there's also a huge download for newer games, somewhere between 20 to 50 gigs, depending on the title. Along with that, whenever you've got to reinstall a game, you've got to re-download it, you've got to wait all that time. With a disc, all the data is on the disc, so it just installs off the disc, which is going to be a lot faster than any downloading can do and installing. It's always going to be faster to, to install off a disc. Obviously, there's also no resale value. You can't trade the game back in, can't get any credit for a future purchase, and it's not really easy to share your content with other users unless they log in onto you on their account and they're an authorized user and so on and so forth. Now, disc games. There are plenty of sales. Heck, there are sales on games all the time, even sometimes the week after the game comes out. And there are memberships you can get, like Gamers Club Unlocked, which I've talked a lot about, and you can get 20% off games. That's a whole thing there. Uh, there is easy sharing. Just hit, pop the disc up, give it to your buddy. You can always see when you're done playing a game, or if you didn't like the game, you can always sell it back, get some credit, put it towards a future game or something else completely. And for people like me who like to physically own a game to feel some sense of ownership, that's also great. For me, I like the whole being able to hold something in my hand. Cons, of course, are you gotta swap out discs for different games. For me, when I'm playing a game, I'm usually playing the game for a while, so that's at a minimum. Discs can wear down depending on if you don't take care of them, they can get scratched, so on and so forth. They can possibly even break down over time. You can lose the disc, obviously that's always a risk. So at the end of the day, you gotta debate what's better for you. Do you like the pros for digital a lot more? Is it worth the cost to you? Is discs worth it even if it's an inconvenience just for the price savings and the ability to resell the items? Do you like physical goods? Again, it's up to you. I'm not trying to tell you which one is good for you. Again, I will state I personally stick with physical for the most part because I feel the benefits outweigh. But that's my opinion. You may see different. If you feel like that, feel free to share it in the comments below. I would love to hear about it. Once again, I want to say this is the end of the video, obviously. So thanks again for watching. I would love it if you could leave me some feedback. Shoot it down there. Shoot it in the RT forum, wherever you want. Thanks for watching. If you've got some free time, check out some of the videos I'm showing over here. Otherwise, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.